guys welcome back to my channel please if this is your first time of coming across my channel please just do me the favor and click on the subscription button thank you so much so um we are still on the issue of uh prophet tb joshua anyway i thought that by now the story must have died down but even at that it's still generating some you know controversies it's still coming up they they are not really backing down on it so there's another report on BBC, I believe it's part of the documentary that they released, but it has been filtered out about six ways um, T.B. Joshua normally fakes his uh, miracles. You know, um, some of, one, of the, one of the disciples who, who confessed or who testified said that he is among the people who normally arrange uh, miracles for him. But what I'm even curious about is to know how through all these things are. I'm not trying to, I'm not trying to, you know, dispute the documentary, but I, I, I feel, I, to me, I believe there's no concrete evidence to all these things. That's what I feel. BBC being who they are, by now should have gotten much information, even video evidence, you know, video evidence to show us, for us to believe actually what they are saying is the truth. You know, all we've been hearing is uh, people being, anybody come out, they will interview, the person will give his or her own side of the story, like the daughter who, who the, the lady who claimed to be the daughter, the Ajoke girl, that came out to say that uh, she is the prophet's daughter, born out of wedlock. And other people have come out to say that Ajoke was actually picked under a truck when she was some months old, and she was brought into the household, or into the compound and that tb joshua adopted her and raised her up till when she started misbehaving and she went her way you know then mm, tb joshua tb joshua's wife has also said something about the bisola you know that bisola was just somebody who left the, her husband to come to the church and started you know so many things so many ups and downs on this issue you know the church is debunking it but the bbc still insist that their documentary is authentic do you get what i'm saying but bbc being who they are as i said earlier they should have a spy in that place planted this church is over three decades you know the church was established and founded in 1987 if i'm not mistaken so when technology started advancing let's say from the 90s late 90s 2000 you know i believe let, let me even leave 2000. Let's come to like 2010 when we started hearing all this cho 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 about uh, TB Joshua and all that. BBC should have planted somebody, go in as a member, become a disciple. The students said that they will get them, they will collect anything. You, do, you don't have access to phone or whatever, but you knowing what you have in mind, you should know how you, they have secret cameras. Your pen can be a secret camera that can record or anything. Go in there and get information, do an investigative journalism and get all these things in camera, get pictures, get um, footages, video footages of what is happening today. You, now, you can now come out to, you know, corroborate with what the people are saying, all these people that you interviewed. At least if they are saying it, you'll be giving us the clips of what happened, but rather you are picking the, the normal videos that are flying, you know, where he's doing his miracle, where he's doing his deliverance and be showing us but you're not showing us the real thing that he's being accused of this is what journalists should have done bbc being they said that they gathered like 25 uh journal oh, okay 25 um people are from around the globe for this thing or 15 journalists or whatever are for this their documentary so none of them could have gotten into that place get the real facts get it on camera and show all so the whole world will know yes that this man is actually guilty of what he is being accused of. So as it is now, we are just hearing, it's just here say, somebody will be, you know, in front of the camera and say, TB Joshua did this, TB Joshua did that, without any video evidence or pictorial evidence for us to actually know if it is the truth. So, now this is a report, part of the report that was released, that uh, BBC is insisting that, that they have six ways TB Joshua normally fakes his miracles. So a BBCI report has insisted that they are still insisting 
that the late Nigerian televangelist D.B. Joshua faked miracles within his synagogue church of all nations. BBC in their report stated that it had uncovered a web of, a web of deceptive practices allegedly employed by the late Nigerian televangelist to fabricate miracles and listed six ways the late church leader allegedly fake miracles. So you say that you have uncovered a web of you know, deceptive practices without showing us without showing us how he did it or how he's doing it. But rather, these, these, these are the information people pass to you. It's noted that the investigation, which draws insight from more than 25 insiders across various countries, shed light on a series of deceptive tactics employed within SCOAN. The investigation, which was published on BBCI website on Sunday, alleged that Joshua, who passed away in 2021 at age 57, was a fraud. So, it details six ways through which T.B. Joshua allegedly deceived worshippers, noting that these discoveries came from those who worked with the late church leader. No outsider who, was, who came in, maybe what that was planted, gave us this information. In 2004, Nigeria's broadcast regulation prohibited the airing of pastor's supposed miracle on the terrestrial TV, leading Joshua to launch Emmanuel TV on satellite and later online. His global television and social media network became one of the world's most successful Christian platforms, broadcasting to millions across Europe, the Americas, Southeast Asia, and Africa. His YouTube channel garnered hundreds of millions of views. Now, they now listed uh, or explained the six ways he normally perform his fake miracle. Number one is that they have an emergency department. So, an exclusive section of the church named the emergency department was responsible for making the so-called miracles look real. This is where the sick who came to be healed will be screened and where the team will decide who should be filmed and, and prayed for by Joshua. Agomo Paul, who supervised the department for 10 years, receiving direct instruction from Joshua, told the BBC that the team was trained by medical doctors. He is a former disciple, one of an elite group, of dedicated followers who lived with the pastor inside a squan compound that they are referring to the agomo paul any cancerous situation they send them away then people who had normal open wounds that can heal they bring them in to present as cancer he says only a select group of trusted disciples were allowed to work in the emergency department they would write placards for each follower to hold detailing their made up or exaggerated ailments when it was time to meet Joshua, they would stand in the line in front of the camera and be helped. <laughs> That's part of how they say they fake the, the miracle. It was a complicated system. Not all disciples knew what was happening. It was a secret, Mr. Paul says. So the second one is drugs. You know, Every foreign visitor who came to the church to be healed had to fill out a medical report detailing their illness and medication they were currently prescribed. They will be told to stop taking them, but Joshua would order pharmacists to produce the same med medicine. Without their knowledge, they will put those drugs in their fruit juice, explained Mr. Paul, who said people would be urged to drink the cocktail that had been blessed by Joshua. <laughs> Did you get that? Their, their medication, will, they, will go, they will go and stop, tell them to stop using their medication since they've known the kind of medication they are using. So, T.B. Joshua has his own pharmacist. They will now go and manufacture those drugs and they will now put it in the cocktail they will drink. Maybe that the, the cocktail is blessed by the prophet. So, when drinking it, not knowing that the medication they've been prescribed for are, are already inside the juice, they will drink and they will be healed. So, this means while visitors were residing as Kwan, they will not become unwell and would believe in the divine healing power of their pastor. You see that? Now, in 1990s, when HIV AIDS has reached epidemic level across parts of sub-Saharan Africa, Joshua told visitors to stop taking their antiretroviral medication when they return home. I know people died because they didn't take their med medicine, and it's difficult to live with that, admit a former disciple who asked not to be named. Why, why wouldn't they name you? Other people are coming out showing themselves and you say you should not be named. Okay. Tash Ford, now 49. That's the name of the person. Tash Ford, 
now 49, who went to Lagos from South Africa city of Johannesburg in 2001 in the hope of having her failing kidney healed was told to stop taking her drugs. It was a promise that you could supernaturally receive a new kidney, and she told the BBC. At the time, she had already had two kidney transplants. Miss Ford says the disciple said, stop taking your medication and just believe. She did believe she had been healed. But when she got home, after four weeks of not taking her medicine, she went into renal failure and was admitted to hospital. The medics initially managed to save her kidney, but eventually it stopped working, and she had to have kidney dialysis for more than six years before having a third transplant in 2011. So the third miracle, the third way they, they, they fake their miracle, brainwashing. Miss Ford says when she was a squam, she never had any doubts. I honestly thought we were seeing miracles. I literally couldn't believe that I was seeing. I saw someone walk out of a wheelchair. The theoreticality seems to draw everyone in. The former disciple told the BBC that after being screened, the chosen followers will be told to exaggerate their problem so that God can heal you and exaggerate your healings. How can God exaggerate someone's healings or something like that? Okay? The people themselves are clearly being manipulated, she said. The church had a ready supply of wheelchairs, which followers were coerced to use. They were warned they would not be healed unless a certain one when they met Joshua. We are telling them, if you come out there and walk with your legs, Papa will not pray for you. You need to shout, Man of God, help me. I cannot walk, says Mr. Paul. Another former disciple, Bisola, who spent 14 years living as Kwan. This is the one that Mrs. Evelyn, as in T.B. Joshua's wife, said that just came into the synagogue that she left her husband and just came there to you know that's how she started living with them even she said that she had nothing to do with the lady that she she refused to be friend with the lady because she has seen the lady is a kind of human being that her spirit did not accept so she said another former disciple bisola who spent 14 years living as kwam accompanied joshua on his national healing campaign at the church of our savior in Singapore in, two, in 2006. She says she saw people in wheelchairs trying to stand up after the pastor told the congregation he had released faith into the stadium. However, these people had not been screened and she saw them fall down. I was crying. I was crying for them, she says. The emergency department workers themselves were also being manipulated. They were subjected to horrifying ordeals, including physical and torture, and lived by a strict set of rules forbidding to sleep for more than a few hours at a time. They struggle to understand how and why they continued to follow the pastor's order. T.B. Joshua told me, Don't worry, we use this thing to build people's faith in Christ. I wasn't having in mind that I was actually doing something wrong. I thought I was doing something that would help to build the faith of people in the church, says Mr. Paul. For Miss Ford, it was meant she has lost all faith in organized religion. I wish we had known that it was all a farce, that it wasn't true. I was manipulated into believing that what the prophet was doing was supernatural, miracle, wonders, signs. So the fourth one, bribe. Wow. Some disciples alleged they were charged with finding people who needed money to pretend to be sick. When they performed healing crusade in countries outside Nigeria, they would go to the poorer areas of the city to search for people living in poverty. We will say, we need you to just act out this particular scene and we will pay you. Another former disciple told BBC. So, why didn't BBC, because I know that BBC must have gotten all these informations, why didn't they go to all these places and make inquiries if there is something like that, if they actually met with people and say, we need you to just act out this particular scene and we will pay you. BBC would, should have gone there themselves. This is investigation. You want to report something big like this. You would have gone to those places since they have people who are saying this. Give them information. Give BBC information. Let them go there. Meet the community and interview them. Is there anything like this? This man called TB. Was there any time he came here and said that, come out and perform this and we'll pay you? It's as simple as that and you'll be recording them. Anyway, even if they do, people will say that it's still organized. Anyway, let's continue. <laughs> um, we get them into hotels. We get them cleaned up. They come. They do what they do. We give them their money and the rest is history, she says. 
before the service, they would tell Joshua which role they had planted these people and what clothes they were wearing so he would know who to perform the supposed miracle on. People would be brought in just to pretend that they were healed, she says. So the fifth one, fake medical certificate. The healing miracles broadcast to millions regularly, including medical reports stating people had been cured of HIV AIDS and disease like cancer. Doctors were interviewed on camera confirming the cures. In 2000, Nigerian journalist Ade Juwon Shoyinka reported that these medical certificates were fake, but Joshua squashed his investigation and it went nowhere. To this day, some people believe they were healed, but insiders say it was all a performance on the late preacher's part. But at least I know that there are Nigerians who must have gone there and got healed. You get, there are some Nigerians who must have gone there and got healed. These are the people BBC should try to reach. Or they, Anyway, I don't know how they will do that. If they will be able to come out to say, yes, I was actually healed at this Koan church. Or some people will say, no, ah, what they are doing there, I don't understand. What thing they do me, still they do me even after I left that place. Well, let's continue. This whole thing is stage managed and fake. It's fake, says Mr. Paul, describing Joshua as an evil genius. There was nothing that took place in the compound that Joshua did not know about, he explained. T.B. Joshua was the one who masterminded the whole manipulation, he said. So now this is, this is the sixth video manipulation. <laughs> the miracles were filmed and then edited to make it look like the supposed healing had happened instantaneously. Before and after footage was plied together to show his purported miraculous powers. But in reality, the film were short months or even a year apart. All you see on TV is the before and after. You don't know the time space, says Bisola, who was Kwan chief video editor for five years and worked on Emmanuel TV. Like other insider interviewed by BBC, she opted to only use the first name. What people see is not real. It is a fraud, she said about the clips and broadcasts she oversaw. I am speaking now as someone who was an insider, she said. Anything they did not want viewers to see was cut out. It was all organized, she said. BBC Africa reached out to Squan with the allegation but received no response. How do you expect to get response? You can't get response from them. You get. Although the church denied pro previous claims against Joshua, stating making unfounded allegations against Prophet T.B. Joshua is not a new occurrence. None of the allegations was ever substantiated. At least you should have substantiated with evidence, video evidence. As I said earlier, this is something that you would have planted some people as spy. Let them join the disciple. You know, this must have happened when Joshua was still, uh, uh, you know, alive. Plant them there. Let them join as the disciple. Is still Joshua going to know what they, unless the man holds you, honestly. Let them be inside there as disciples and start seeing all these things for themselves and you now come out with all this evidence to substantiate all your claims. Well, this is their documentary. They've done it. I have, I have no power to dispute it, but I am only saying my own opinion and you have your own opinion also. Thank you so much for listening and don't forget to like my video and also subscribe to my channel. Thank you and have a wonderful day.